I, the thing I was trying to point out in my sermon is that we we want to feel something that's related to our works, and we want to have that significance. And um, yeah. you know, the confessions in, uh, under good works says that the, that uh, our good works can bolster our assurance; they can bolster Great our point, faith. John. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. Yeah, yeah. In that, the, I, I often find encouragement within the body of Christ when I have the opportunity to show the affections of Jesus towards somebody. Because if you think about what a good work is, ultimately you're taking the nature and person and the words of God and you're reflecting it in word and action. It's like, that's that should encourage you if you're centering your life on the truth of Christ. That should mm-hmm. encourage you, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean it always will, but it can. It doesn't mean it's the ultimate confirmation, but it can give that seasoning of life where it's like, man, I can really taste the sweetness of Jesus. But then there are other times where the confession says that there are times where that's not the case. So you can't ground your assurance there. Exactly. But I want to say here, the ultimate goal of James is not the validation of their faith. He's saying you are ardently rejecting the priority of the Christian mm. life. This is mm. where I think he's saying, and yeah. I, I can argue, and I did in my sermon, and we will probably do uh, in the SR podcast, uh-huh. I can argue that the priority of the Christian life, the mm. point of ones who are justified, sanctified, glorified by the power of the work of the Holy Spirit, by faith and grace alone, the purpose of their life, uh, that Second Peter says that if you don't show brotherly affection, you're ineffective and unfruitful, not yeah. in justifying or proving your justification in the goal of what? Obeying the second commandment, which is mm. to love your neighbor. You're ineffective. No, in that's it. right. Two thoughts. Uh, one, I'm really glad you brought up chapter 16 of our confession mm. on good works because it is entirely right that we would say and be consistent in communicating that, yes, we can and should be encouraged by our good works and by the good works of our brothers and sisters. Mm. We can have our assurance bolstered. That's what the confession says by our good works and by the good works of others you know, indirectly as well. That's wonderful. And that's the grace and kindness of God to us because we're just seeing anew. I'm not what I once was. I'm that's not right. what I used to be. Right. And I'm really encouraged by that. Mm. And others are observing that in me and I'm observing it in others. It's like, hey man, the spirit of God's at work in us. This is good. That We should absolutely live and talk like that. That's right. But the thing is, is we're trying to hold those things in an appropriate place. We're not trying to ground our justification and our assurance on those things. We are just receiving encouragement in terms of our assurance from those things. So that's the distinction that we want to be careful to maintain. And yeah, I'm totally with you, John. Can I just that, add one passage yeah. to prove what you just said about yeah. the confession? This is sure. Jesus as he's about to go to the cross. He's trying to encourage his disciples in John 15. And he says, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Hey, Justin, do you think the joy of Christ in our life is going to bring us some assurance? <laughs> I do. So maybe just a little. Uh, a skosh. Yeah, you know, just a little the bit. The term. joy of Jesus yeah. is a great way to find some assurance. That's right. He says this, this is my commandment that you love one another. He says, I've said these things to you that you may have my joy. Here's what I've told you. Mm. This is my commandment that you love one another. Mm. So that you can see why that would be a priority for a Christian to go, okay, God's promised me joy. He's promised me unity. He's promised me strength. And he didn't give me religious acts that are based upon my individual performance. He says, take what you've, why do we love first John? We love because he first loved us. We'll talk more about that. Thank you for listening. Today's reminder is from a recent Theocast episode hosted by John Moffat and Justin Perdue. Everyday Grace is a listener supported podcast. If you would like to help support our ministry, please visit theocast.org slash give.